In this video, we're going to be replacing these end panels, both sides, and uh, replacing the seat, the seat boxes. That's all rotten in that corner, and that's all rotten here in the battery box. It's looking really sad, really. Look at all this rubbish, look at all that rust and dust. Anyway, so that's going to come out. We're not too concerned about the carpet because that's finished. So what we're going to do first of all is get rid of these seat boxes. Quite simple, 3 16th pop rivets, just drill out all the, all the pop rivets here. I don't expect that there will be many rivets left at the front. Hmm. Well there's a few, but you can see how they go. So we're going to lose all that uh, box. We'll rip this carpet off because it's already ripped. And um, yeah, we'll take off these clips. They're not too bad to do. So let's get to, let's get drilling. When you're drilling these rivets out, you just have to knock the heads off. You don't have to go wild and drill them all the way through because these had a steel shank in, and you sort of if you hit the shank of the pop rivet, you, your drill will run off all over the place, so just have to drill off the... Uh, drill off the heads, you see that one went through. But, don't chisel them, or grind them. All it takes is a little bit of patience with the 316 drill. And they'll come off. There is quite a few of them though. That's why I got an air pop riveter because uh, doing all these by hand does take quite a while. So I'm going to get on and take all those out. So after drilling, should be able to get that out. Now there is one little tricky one that's under here. There's the bolt that holds your um, seat in. There's a little uh, 532 steel pop rivet. You just drill that out as well because that's clinched between the steel and the aluminium, and it makes your life a bit difficult if you miss it. Uh, again, sort of running out of space a little bit. We'll get this out of the way, uh, and then you can see a bit clearly what we're after. That bit. That is scrap. Now, let's do the same at this end. Mercury used to say another one bites the dust. There we go. That scrap. Let's see. We're going to take off these end panels. Now, to take off the end panels, we can do a little trick. I don't know if you can see this one. On here, there is a series of spot welds. Now I can't spot weld aluminium but I am going to just put regular pop rivets back in but I'm going to drill those spot welds out with a 3 16 drill and hopefully we can, when we can then drill through that hole again once we get the side panel on and uh, re-pop rivet it. Does it matter? I, it doesn't have to. I mean nobody ever's got, nobody's got a bloody um, aluminium spot welder but it'll make the job a lot tidier but if you've got carpet on it, it's not going to see. It. You're not going to see it anywhere. I mean, there are some people who get very anal about things like this, but well, buy another seat box. Unfortunately, we can't. So let me start to drill this out, and uh, we'll come back and just take the ends off. 
Sometimes it's not possible to see where the spot welds are at the top of the panel because on, on some this is a 300 TDI obviously but sometimes this panel actually comes off but this one's been spot welded but because it's been it's had some double sided sticky tape put on here for the carpet well you can't see exactly where you've been welding so uh, well you've got a drill so simply turn it upside down and drill it through the bottom the next thing we've got to do I'm just looking at my lights there is use our old favourite chisel this thing this this started life like one of these chisels you get from a hardware store they're for furniture and taking nails and prying wooden furniture but they're a very nice hardened steel last you forever but look how super thin that is and when it's super thin you can cut through the spot wells where is it? I've got phones going sorry about that telephone so uh, yeah we're going to use this we're going to use this very thin chisel to split the panels because obviously when you're working on aluminium it's very uh, well, it's so easy to damage but the other problem is when, you, when you're drilling out spot welds is this the spot weld that we're using uh, the drill that we're using to put our pop rivets back in is 3 16 of an inch however sometimes the spot weld is around about quarter of, a, quarter of an inch I'm sorry you'll have to work in inches but so you're going to have to sort of split the, the weld a little bit it just won't pull apart but the problem is if you drill it out to a quarter of an inch then you've got to find some quarter inch pop rivets not the easiest things to find so I hope you can see this so I'm going to start to split this panel I'm going too well there we, go. we don't want to damage anything, but that's uh, that's coming away nicely. A little bit at a time. Oh, that's that bit. Now, I'm going to show you something, just one minute. The seat belt bracket on the station wagon sits in the bottom. And this is really important because you've got to take this out before you can get the seat base out. There is one, there's two bolts. One goes through here and one at the top. Never cut them off, try and unscrew them. Because they're captive nuts into your B post. Uh, very important, you don't damage them. The rest, like these under here, cut them off with a grinder. Doesn't matter because you are replacing the panel anyway. I cut this one off. But this back corner one here is very tricky to get into because the door 
pillar is about here. It's very tricky to get into. So what I use, if I've still got it here, is the, is the uh, I just get a good burr or a, on the die grinder and simply cut, cut the head off. And if you've got some good sharp burrs, they'll come off in next to no time. And then you're not damaging this uh, pristine bracket that we've got here. Um, again, this isn't really much good. You'll spend more time fixing this up than it's actually worth. So, I'm going to take the rest of this, this other side off and then we'll get round to putting, it back, putting the new piece back on. If you have a difficulty seeing where the spot welds are, just take a little bit of emery, sandpaper or something, and just sand it down because obviously there's, there's corrosion in the primer of this thing. But now you can see there's a weld here, 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 here. There's the one at the front? No, there isn't. Obviously the spot welder wouldn't go that far. So that's just a little tip and then you can see where all your spot welds are. So once you've got your panels off, it's time to do a little bit of straightening and work. Uh, I go over all the old spot welds with a, a buffing disc like this, a little soft disc, make them all nice and flat. However, we have problems with corrosion here. Now, in an ideal world, I'd take this outside and sandblast it. But my container's got three foot of snow outside and I'd never sandblast in winter. You know, little jobs like this, forget it. And it was too big for my cabinet. So what we're going to use, the best thing we can do, is a wire brush on your grinder. Now, things to note, dust mask, essential when you're using wire brushes and things. And also, I can't stress this enough when you're using this type of twist wire wheel on a grinder. Goggles are a must, because when them little flakes come off, and they will, they can go through your overalls and all sorts of bits and pieces, which are most discomforting. However, the last thing you want them to go into your eyes. I, did, I didn't need it there anyway. But it's almost like being attacked by a porcupine. Now, if you're interested, go and have a look. Go and have a look at what porcupines do when they get frightened and they shoot the quills. Nasty stuff. Exactly the same as this grinder. So let me get grinding this. And I'll show you all the rubbish that comes off and the dust, which is why you need a mask. Preferably do it outside, but well, obviously we can't have that luxury. There you go. Even I felt one or two little... Uh... Oh, look! Look at that! Can you see? A bloody thing stuck in my mask, look! Exactly my point. These things are nasty. Imagine that going in your eye. Not very nice. People don't think about things, you know. The people say, oh, can you repair, can you repair my uh, foot seat base? And they sort of don't know all the perils that we have to go through. If you noticed there when I was sanding it, there'd been some caulking around the old um, seat box. I took all that out because sometimes if you've got to, how, do we, how could we describe it? 
if you've got a panel and it's got a bead of corking, invariably you'll find that your new panel might not quite match up. I mean, bloody hell, what does that match up on a Land Rover? So it's easy to take that off rather than fighting against it. So now we're all ready to go on this side. I'm going to clean up the other side and then we'll dig out the panels. So we've got our new panels. I've got a sneaking, these were in Brit Park bags, but I think they're made by uh, YRM or whatever they're called. Um, they seem to be pretty good. But first of all, I've got to take off this protective layer. Which is all well and good. But sometimes it's a bugger to get off, especially when this is cold. So I'm going to take a little bit of time taking this off, and I've got some things to show you. It isn't always obvious where your panel's going to fit. Um, it, this one goes on this side. Uh, does it? Oh, it goes on the Oh, that's right. It goes like that. Right, so that's the, the, the length's good, and if it's done by YMI, you know it's going to fit. However, what people can make a mistake with is this bit. Let me sort of move the camera a bit and zoom in. See this bit here on this corner? Well, you can see there's a paint line, there's an existing paint line. So the a lot of people I've seen make rookie mistakes and put that panel lining up to here. Not good. So what you want to do is when you put your panel on, make sure that that paint line, this, this piece here, is exactly, oh wait a minute, there you go, exactly on that paint line there. And then it'll be all ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get some clamps, clamp this up, and then we'll get ready for pop riveting. As you know, I always think about you guys working at home and you haven't got clamps and things like that just to do one-off jobs. So what I do in lots of situations, and you'll see me use it when I do the door pillars, is I use these things called tech screws. They're a 5 16th or 8mm head, self-drilling, self-tapping screw. And they're really useful because they're actually smaller than the um, pop rivet that we're going to be using. So we're going to drill through the pop rivet hole here to locate this panel temporarily, maybe put two in, till we're happy where it is. And then once it's all in place, then we can, then we can get the drill out and do some pop riveting. A magnetic chuck is really handy for these things. But I've got one in at the bottom, but it's not quite right. I'm not happy with it. But it's lined me up height-wise to get this one in at the top so, or, or at the bottom. So now I'm going to pull it across, drill that one in, take this one out, make sure our panel goes nice and tight to the side like that, and then put it in the second one. Right? Don't put it back in the same hole because the drill will probably follow the same hole like that. And you can see that's got a nice edge to it. I haven't got one in the, the front, but we can tap this and make it all nice. But so far, so good. And then we're going to do exactly the same on here. Jesus. Bloody gravity. Now, so what we're going to do is going to line up our mark. Get happy with that. Put the tech screw through and hold it tight. Try not to drill you through your fingers at the other side. But well, you can see there that's nice. So I'm going to continue to uh, do a few more tech screws and then we can get on with the pop riveting. You can probably see where the confusion arises when you put this panel on. You can see here that it's just nice and Right on the corner, uh, this angle here is on the corner of that uh, chamfer there, but it's flush at this end, so it's on a taper. It's very tempting to put this parallel to that one and then you find out it won't fit on. So, the beauty about the tech screws as well is because they're infinitely adjustable, you know, you can take them out and use them again. And that's the point. When you're doing sheet metal work, just put a tech screw through it, hold it in place rather than messing about with your fingers and burning your fingers if you're welding. You know, 
and then they're always usable. So I've drilled a few out here. I'm going to use my air pop riveter because I'm lazy. But when you do thousands of pop rivets, <laughs> you believe me, it's worth its weight in gold. So that's what we do. We, we just go around and rivet it all back up, and then we'll do the other side. So that's all the rivets in. Uh, I know they're not in a very straight line because I've drilled out of the spot welds and when the spot weld in they don't care if it's in a straight line. It's all done by some spotty 16 year old in Birmingham. Now occasionally uh, what you could do, sometimes you get situations like this on the top. I don't know if you can see. Wait a minute. Let's, uh, let's have a zoom. Occasionally you'll get problems like this where you've got two spot welds right next to each other and you put two pop rivets in and they look a bit ugly. Um, the situation to cope with that is simply to use a solid rivet. Now you could solid rivet it all the way but it's a lot of work and you could still do it the same. You could countersunk your panel, countersink it, put the rivet in using your, uh, your air gun on a very low pressure and a dolly behind or alternatively you could hammer them together, it doesn't really matter. But that's a way to get over them. I just thought I'd show you, but this job, I'm not going to do it. So, we're all set up now. The panel looks great, it fits nice. Uh, next thing is to find some seat bases. Uh, seat boxes, sorry. So I found my seat base, uh, battery box. Now, this was a, an original battery box from Land Rover. Um, and I had it shot blast and painted quite a long time ago in England and I've just brought it across it's been on the shelf for a long time so it's a bit dusty and dirty but it's going to be fine and hopefully with a bit of luck it's going to fit like a glove <laughs> that said if it was a Land Rover glove it'd only have four, uh, three fingers right oh look, look at, yeah look yeah look look at that Look at those holes on there. Spot on. That's what you want. So, I'm going to get now break out my corking gun. Ooh. And we're going to do some cork on the seals before we put it in. Now, hopefully, because this is a genuine part, the pop rivets will line up. Maybe. Maybe not. Because the pop rivets are not spot welds. When you do spot welding, you can be sort of indiscriminate as possible. It doesn't really matter. But when it's pop rivets, obviously <coughs> these are made by one spotty 16 year old at one side of Birmingham and this is made by some spotty 16 year old at the other side of Birmingham. But they should line up, I hope. <coughs> we'll try. So I'm going to be using my uh, air caulking gun which we've got plugged into a regulator. It's really important because of the surface area on here, you don't need much pressure. Unlike my friend Chris, who plugged it straight into a 100 pound line and emptied the cartridge in about two seconds. That was messy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow around the edges of here. Oh, I've just noticed there's still a spot welding, a pop rivet in there. I'm gonna drill that one out. Just check all these spot welds and pop rivets are out. That's good. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some caulking right round these faces here and then just drop it on. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something really funky. I'm going to put the caulking on here on this side so I can grab onto it without getting caulking everywhere. Well, that's the plan. There we go. about these caulking things is it doesn't shut off the air completely. You always end up with a bit of a dreg. Now you don't obviously need to go uh, too wild 
you can and you can use a regular corking gun, but it is really well, see what see what happens. It keeps residual pressure in and that's not only waste, but it makes it all nasty to use for the other side. So I'm gonna drop that on. I'm gonna put a couple of bolts through here just temporarily to keep it lined up and then we're gonna see if we can get these spot welds in. So here we go. Pop rivet tang on there, that's not going to help. There we go. And then just slide it forward, slide it in, clean. And we'll get a couple of bolts. And then we'll find a couple of nuts back in a minute. A handy dandy tool to have in your arsenal of repair tools is a very thin punch or whatever, I think they're for woodworking for starting screws off, but they're actually the nice diameter, about 316, so you can put them into the pop rivet holes and you find out that they're going to work, which is nice. So that lines up, what is the next one? Oh, it's my birthday. Look at that. Oh, that was all spotty 16 year olds were well, well on the job when they were doing this. Now I'm going to do the rest of these, but just in case you're wondering. The reason why I put corking in wasn't to make it waterproof at all. I'm not bothered about that. It's just a barrier between the steel and the aluminium. We've got to try and stop any, any moisture making electrolytic contact again. Does it work? I don't know. Probably. But it's better than nothing. That's the, that's the issue. And these boxes do get a lot of moisture and water in them. You know. So I'm going to continue putting that box in. Uh, there's quite a few pop, riveting, pop rivets to do, quite boring, but I'll show you the results when we come back. So there we are. I've left the bolts in here, because you can see probably uh, the uh, sealers, the uh, corking squidging out, and that will act like an adhesive too, it really will stick. Um, so that's about it for that. Um, just got to find the box for the other side and it's repeat. And that's all there is really. There's no more tricks and te techniques to show you. It went really well. Used a, used a horrendous amount of pop rivets as you can see from the probably you can see from the bench. You know the only pop rivets that didn't line up, they all lined up except Bah, they're a bloody numb thing. The only ones that didn't line up were these two here. I don't know why, for some reason they're up here. There are some little holes in here. They're not pop rivet holes, they're for the putting the little plastic studs in to hold the carpet in once they start flopping about. So, that is a nice seat box. I'm very pleased with that job. Yeah, that went really, really well. Like I say, lunch time now, so I'll just I'll get, I'll get my lunch and then we'll have an attack on this one here. So there we are, that's the seat base done. 66 pop rivets it took. I've done. In fact, I've run out. I'm going to have to go downtown and get some more pop rivets. But why? Come here, because I haven't even done this front edge yet. Uh, well, this side edge. But boy, you don't have to get through them. Um, so that's it, it's, it's not a bad job to do, just take your time, it's quite easy, but like I say, I think uh, YRM, they do replacement boxes for these in stainless steel and uh, all sorts of materials now, and I think they actually do the seat box, the battery box, where it's in two or three pieces where you don't have to take it out, which is quite a good idea, because I've got a flashing light, just a second, I'm going to turn problems of being a movie star. Anyway, um, that's going to go well. 
Um, oh, nice and it's going to line up well, a lot better than it was before. Problem is now, how do we paint it? Because really, when you've done things like this, this aluminium wants a good coat of uh, uh, epoxy primer or an etching primer and a coat of paint. Well, the problem is, if we bolt it straight onto the car, there's not going to get any paint underneath where, where I'd like some paint. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so that's it. Making this Land Rover better. It's not a bad job to do to make your Land Rover better, but it's far better to buy a car that isn't in this state in the first place. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.